Chapter 465, The Other Shore, but at this time, Li Kai's body suddenly emitted a strange and mysterious aura. Don't mess with me or I'll butcher all of you. Li Kai coldly declared. This mysterious aura came from the item that Li Kai previously borrowed from the ancestral flow master. The gigantic shadow and the handlers were very wary of this thing. The shadow chose not to attack and all the handlers also withdrew. They didn't dare to look straight at Li Kai. The fairy was then pushed by a force that brought them to the other side. This seems not all the young cultivators. Someone thought that he was only seeing things and kept on rubbing his eyes. No way. Many didn't dare to believe such a thing. Li Kai killed a handler, yet the shadow and all the other handlers just let him off like that? They didn't know that Li Kai was carrying an extremely heaven-defying item, something that instilled absolute fear in these types of ghastly creatures. The crowd remained stunned for a long time as they watched Li Kai ride the fairy to disappear in the far horizon. Bah, lucky bastard. The divine spark prince exclaimed with an ugly expression. He gritted his teeth from anger since he didn't expect Li Kai to be able to reach the other shore alive. The titanic crescent saint child's eyes were flashing with glimmers as he whispered, There is something amazing on that guy, am I Tebha, am I Tebha, quite amazing. Monk Dazi also couldn't help but murmur. Just like Li Kai had said, Monk Dazi had a treasure boat that could let him cross the Black Sea, the boat left behind by immortal Emperor Mengdu. However, the monk would not carelessly use the ship because he was wary of the Black Shadow along with the handlers. He was unable to confirm whether they would mount an assault if he were to cross. At this moment, Li Kai was able to cross after killing a handler without suffering an appropriate response. This told Monk Dazi that Li Kai possessed something even more frightening than himself. In the far distance, a red cloud suddenly flew closer at an unparalleled speed. Monk Dazi's expression greatly changed as his neck shrank a bit into his body before quickly escaping in fear. The Black Sea was calm, there was nothing else besides the pitch black water. Li Kai rode the fairy like a powerful arrow, drifting quickly towards the other shore. Kirong Wangsu was still in a stunned state. She didn't expect that Li Kai's method was to kill a handler and aggressively steal a fairy. Moreover, not one handler dared to attack them. She wouldn't even dare to think about such a feat before. What's wrong? Do you enjoy my embrace so much that you're too reluctant to pull away? Amidst her daze, she suddenly heard Li Kai's teasing voice next to her ear. This immediately woke her up as she found herself still tightly hugging his body with both hands on his waist. At this moment, she wanted to jump down into a hole from embarrassment. Her entire body felt hot. Her legs weakened as a numbing sensation emanated throughout her body. She quickly escaped with a blushed complexion and didn't dare to look straight at Li Kai. Don't fall in love with me, I'm only a legend. In contrast to her lovable bashfulness, Li Kai was nonchalant and was even in the mood to tease her. Kirong Wang Su's face felt very hot, but in the depths of her shyness, there was also a slight sensation as if she had lost something. There was an indescribable sense of loss. A long time later, she only gently sighed. The fairy carried the two of them towards the other side at a very high speed. After traveling for quite a while, they finally saw the other side. From a far distance, one could only see a dark landmass. Moreover, the sky above this land was multicolored with bright light soaring towards the horizon. After slowly landing on the shore, the two stepped on to land at last. Then, Li Kai sealed this ferry on the Black Sea. This boat and the underworld boat were a bit similar. Once this thing left the Black Sea, it would rot so there was no way to bring it along. Suddenly, there was a buzz. A beautifully melodious sound. The moment the two arrived, their Tao foundation suddenly became very lively with hymns as many universal laws abruptly appeared. Both Li Kai's and Kirong Wang Su's bodies were surrounded by the hymns of the Grand Tao. Each universal law was like a soaring phoenix. They appeared alongside many floating runic rays. It was as if the two had become part of the Grand Tao as it resonated with their own Tao foundation. A new Tao would appear right below each of their steps. The sonorous bell-like rings were like a dancing melody. Kirong Wang Su's reaction was even greater than Li Kai's. Universal laws began to weave around her body, turning into words that eventually opened a new immortal chapter. These universal laws emitted a brilliance with golden powder drifting down alongside pleasant sounds. It could be said that each of her steps right now resulted in a new blooming lotus flower. The heaven and earth's grand Tao chose to assist her. Wherever she went, the grand Tao would follow. What is going on? Kirong Wang Su was startled. Although the grand Tao gave her an incomparable feeling and great benefits, she herself knew that, with her talents and cultivation, she was very far from harmonizing with the grand Tao so walking with the grand Tao was impossible. However, such a matter was happening to her right now, so how could she not jump from astonishment? This is a Tao land and you are a ghost. This Tao land has a lot to do with your ghost race. Li Kai answered with a smile. Kirong Wang Su somehow managed to calm down and followed Li Kai deeper into this land. She found that it was very strange. Mountains and roads were expansive while majestic rivers covered this vast land. However, upon a closer inspection, one would see that the mountain ranges were erected by Tao bones. Tao laws formed the earth, and the riverbeds were made from Tao chapters while Tao runes caused the water to flow. All aspects of life on the ground were also similar in this regard. Whether it was the birds flying in the sky or the beasts running on the ground or the vegetation that didn't have life essence, they were all derived from the Grand Tao. A big tree towered to the sky before Kirong Wang Su. This tree had a vigorous body with lush, verdant leaves, but another look would show that several Grand Tao universal laws came together to form its old and hard trunk. Smaller universal chains, the size of fine silk strings, came together to form the green leaves. Then there was a giant elephant that ran in front of them. One could see that a Tao foundation made its bones, Tao chapters made the meat, and its eyes were made from the energy of the Grand Tao. Just by staring at it, one would feel the power of the Grand Tao assaulting one's senses like oceanic tides. 
Similarly, there was a bird flying in the sky. Dao runes formed its feathers. A Dao source formed its body, and its eyes were the amalgamation of many Dao laws using spirit energy. It seemed as if this land was full of colorful life like a paradise or a sacred ground, but in reality, there was no life here. Everything was derived from the Grand Dao. They were only a form of the Dao and not true life. In the beginning, Kirong Wang Su didn't clearly see and thought that this land was full of life. However, after following Li Kai for a while, she began to notice the clues. Although the creatures were playfully running around, with a more attentive look, one would be able to see that all of them lacked true life essence. What is this all about? She found this to be too unbelievable, it was even creepier than Necropolis. Although Necropolis was home to a large number of sentiments, they had their own consciousness and perception. They wanted to survive, so it could even be said that outside of not having physical flesh and blood, the sentiments were no different from their outside counterparts. But this place was different. Everything here was dependent on the Grand Owl. No matter if it was the growing trees or the flying little birds, they didn't have an autonomous consciousness or a natural will to survive for they were only derivations of the Grand Owl. You can think of this place as a Dao land, to be more precise. It is a derivation of the Grand Dao from heaven and earth. Li Kai smiled and responded, That. Can't be. Kirong Wang Su was extremely shocked as she found it hard to believe. Everyone knew that amongst the nine worlds and eight desolaces, the nine heavens and ten earths, all the creatures in this world and the myriad of existences were all masterpieces from the heavenly Grand Dao, the sky, the earth, all the existences, the world itself, and the seven emotions and six desires, all of this came from the heavenly Grand Dao. And the scene before her eyes was only a derivation from this Grand Dao. They were unlike the real living creatures outside. Everything here was only made up of universal laws, cold and emotionless. This land was a gigantic and complex machine with orderly functions, but it had no life. You can consider it as the first form of the heavenly Grand Dao, but it probably can't be considered as the first form either because this place cannot give birth to life. To be more precise, this is a very small or miniature version of the heavenly Grand Dao's derivation. The heavenly Grand Dao truly exceeds our imagination. If there was an invincible existence capable of controlling this Dao along with all the worldly laws, then you would be able to see the scene before you again. Li Kai smiled and added, of course, someone who can grasp this heavenly Grand Dao before you is very rare in this world. He continued on with emotion. The true heavenly Grand Dao is able to bear the nine heavens and ten earths and also capable of creating all living existences. It is mysterious and profound, something that is impossible for anyone to comprehend in its entirety. The true heavenly Grand Dao is different from the heavenly Grand Dao that cultivators usually talk about. The Grand Dao mentioned by cultivators is only a small part of the overarching picture. The true heavenly Grand Dao is a power, a universal law. Since time immemorial. There were mortal emperors who referred to the true heavenly Grand Dao as the origin Dao of heaven and earth, the myriad Dao of heaven and earth, or the true Dao of heaven and earth. 